In this video, we're going to be talking about how to wind your bobbin. <clears throat> Before you can um, actually start using your sewing machine, um, it's important to make sure that you understand that not only is thread having to come in from the top of your machine, but it's also gonna have to come in from the bottom of your machine. So that is where the bobbin comes into play. You guys have plastic bobbins um, that came in your home kit. You'll be using those. I'm gonna be demoing with a metal one. The bobbins work the same way. Um, so don't be confused by the fact that I have a metal one. Yours will be plastic. In order to wind your bobbin, <clears throat> you have to place your bobbin on top of this spool right here. Make sure that you place it all the way down and that it's sitting firmly in place there. Then you're going to take your thread and you're going to place your thread on top of this other spool sitting directly behind the, the place you just loaded your bobbin. If it's down like this when you've gotten your machine, pull it all the way up um, and then load your spool of thread onto this taller spool behind your bobbin, okay? So now we're going to prep the top of the machine. So I'm gonna lean this down here so we can see this. There is a little guide here, a little photo image, um, or a little illustration, I should say, of how to uh, wind the thread around this portion of your machine so that you can uh, thread and wind your bobbin. Um, so if you ever get confused about this or forget, come back here and look at this little image here and that should help you. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're gonna feed the thread through the back here, this little device, and then around the circular portion. And we're essentially making a figure eight. Okay, does everyone see that hopefully? We are making a figure eight. You can have the thread kind of tucked in away behind that uh, tracking device or you can kind of leave it loose, but essentially you're crossing <clears throat> crossing over on top of the circular portion here. Once you've done that, you're going to take your thread and wrap it around your bobbin. I tend to go clockwise. If when you start up your machine, your bobbin thread doesn't wanna wind naturally, you may need to take it off and wrap it counterclockwise. Then, this is an important part, you're going to push that spool into this little piece right here. This is gonna lock the bobbin in place. Your machine will not work or operate um, if you don't have this pushed in and locked in place, okay? So now we're ready to actually wind our bobbin. So we're gonna turn our machine on. <clears throat> You'll know the machine is on because the little screen will become active and the little light will turn on down here by your needle and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna put my foot on the pedal down here. I'm still holding on to this thread. I haven't let go of this thread yet. I'm gonna let go once I can tell that the bobbin is actually winding. So I've got my foot on the gas and you can see that the bobbin is loading. <clears throat> the bobbin's gonna load all the way till the end, till it's totally full and it'll stop automatically essentially stopping once it's hit this little piece over here. Now I can let it fill all the way or I can just take my foot off the gas and it will stop by itself, okay? So either leave your foot on and let it continue to fill or take your foot off the gas, okay? By the gas, I mean the pedal. Once you've got your bobbin filled as much as you would like, you're going to then pop it back out of that locked position. Take your bobbin off, kind of unwind it from the spool back here, and then cut it loose, all right? And now your bobbin is wound and ready to be threaded into your machine. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be reviewing how to thread your machine so you can actually use it. Um, threading your machine generally involves three steps. Um, one of them being the winding of your bobbin, which you've already done. So that's essentially step one <clears throat> of the threading process, getting your machine ready. 
in this video, we're gonna look at steps two and three, um, which is top loading your thread. So this being the top of the machine, we're gonna top load our thread. And then we're gonna look at how to load your bobbin into the uh, bobbin case inside your machine so that we can bottom load our thread. Um, as I've said before, you need to have thread coming in from the top and the bottom to successfully sew on a sewing machine. So let's look first at how to thread the top of your machine. Um, you have what's referred to as a thread guide on your machine. Uh, and um, since these are um, teaching machines, you can see that uh, you've got numbers kind of existing on the machine. Um, there are essentially five steps involved in threading a sewing machine, or I should say a, a home sewing machine. Um, once you figure out this threading process, you can pretty much use it on any home sewing machine. There are other kinds of sewing machines that exist that are a little more complicated, but traditional kind of home sewing machines, um, the threading process is, is exactly the same on all of them. So once you understand this motion, um, you can pretty much use it on any, on any sewing machine. So first step is going to be, again, kind of starting up here at the top of this thread guide. We're gonna take our thread and we're gonna feed it through the back of that little metal piece here. So my thread is hanging down here. I'm gonna feed it through the back. There's a little spring that you're gonna pull down on and you can see that it's loaded in place. So that's step one. Step two is gonna be traveling down this vertical open space here, pulling it down. And then step three is looping it back around. <clears throat> step four is a little bit more complicated, but not horribly. You're going to take maybe hopefully you can see this, a little metal piece existing right here inside this larger gap. You're going to thread around that piece working from right to left. So you're going around a big hook inside your machine. If when you're threading your machine, you can't see that hook, you're gonna come over here to your hand wheel and turn it away from you until that little hook is visible for you. Notice also when I am turning this hand wheel, I'm also turning, or allowing my needle to travel up and down. So this hand wheel gives you a little bit more control over your sewing. Um, obviously it will go a lot slower, but all those things are kind of working in tandem as you turn the hand wheel. So again, we're gonna pull this around the hook. Then step five, is going to be traveling down here to uh, your actual needle, okay? And you'll be able to see this when, you, when you're looking at your machine, but you do have essentially a little metal piece sitting right in front of your needle. That metal piece is your needle guard, and um, what it does is it holds your thread kind of tighter to the actual needle so that you're getting a tighter stitch while you're working. So you do have to wrap your thread around that little metal piece um, before you can actually finish this process of threading your needle. So step five then, you're, dr you're bringing it back down. I've got my thread in both hands like this and I'm going to pull it to the back and to the right, okay? Because the opening for this little metal piece is over to the right. So again, got it in my hands like this. I'm gonna take my right hand and pull it to the back until I feel it kind of snap in place. And then I've got step five done. So you can see now that it's essentially living behind that little metal piece. So now I can actually thread <clears throat> my needle. When you're threading your needle, you'll notice that the eye on machine needles is at essentially the bottom of the needle. The eye is existing closer to the, the sharp, the actual point. Um, so when you're threading your needle, you're going to thread away from you. You're gonna thread towards the wall, towards whatever, you know, you're threading this direction away, going forward. So you're gonna take your thread and essentially thread it through the eye, similarly to what you would do on a hand needle, 
However, obviously the eye is in a different location. And that's that. I threaded my needle. I'm gonna pull my thread over to the left, kind of get it out of the way here of my plate. And that's top loading the machine, okay? So that whole process, you'll get used to doing that very, very quickly. So now let's look at the final part of threading your machine, which is loading your bobbin into the bobbin case. So something that I <clears throat> did have off already, and I'll put back on to show you, your machine's probably gonna come with a little plastic lid sitting on top of where your bobbin is supposed to live. You need to take that lid off before you can begin. So there's a little lever over here, a little rectangular square you're gonna pull to the right. That lid's gonna pop off, and then you're just gonna set it to the side while you're loading your bobbin into the machine. So in order to load a bobbin into your sewing machine, any type of sewing machine, you need to make sure that the thread is hanging over the top and to the left. So you can think of it kind of like a clock, right? Where this is 12 o'clock and this is three o'clock. You want your thread to be sitting over here at nine o'clock, okay? So make sure always before you start loading a bobbin into a machine that the thread is over the top and hanging down on the left side of that bobbin, okay? Now we're gonna thread it uh, into the bobbin case living inside the machine. So with that thread hanging over the top to the bottom, I'm gonna put the bobbin into the case, pretty simple enough, but now I'm going to take that thread and I'm gonna drag it through, you can see a little metal piece, or I'm sorry, a little plastic gray section that's got an arrow on it. I'm going to drag it underneath that and around, and I'm going to place that thread right on top of my feed, okay? So your feed is essentially, when you look at the machine, you've got what's referred to as a presser foot, all right? And then you've got this little metal toothing, metal teeth thing sitting right underneath that presser foot. That is your feed, okay? And so you want to make sure that this this bobbin thread is laying across the top of that feed. You're going to wanna to make sure your machine is on number one, okay? And I'll talk to you about all the parts of the machine here in a minute, but you wanna make sure the machine is on number one. So this, uh, these little dials down here, plus and minuses control these numbers that are the types of stitches, all right? So make sure your is over here on number one and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch it back to zero. Watch what the needle does. So on zero, it knocks all the way back over to the left. On number one, the needle comes into the center of the space of my presser foot. And that's what we want. It's gonna be easier for us to do this final part if the needle is traveling into the center of your presser foot. So now um, what we're going to do is essentially using our hand wheel, drive this needle into our feed, so down into the machine, and it's going to pick up that uh, bobbin thread and make sure it's traveling underneath the machine. Because right now, nothing would happen if we were trying to sew. The bobbin thread, even though it's, uh, even though the bobbin is sitting in the bottom of the machine, the thread for the bobbin is sitting across the top. So the thread needs to be coming up from below the machine before we can actually um, successfully start sewing. So uh, in order to do this, it does kind of require that you're doing multiple things at once. I will say this takes some practice. Don't be frustrated with yourself if it takes a while to get this step. This is definitely the hardest part of threading your machine. So again, I've got this thread sort of sitting across the top here, kind of off at a diagonal. The, by this thread, I mean the bobbin thread. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm gonna hold my needle thread in my left hand, okay? So holding my needle thread in my left hand, I'm now gonna take my right hand over to my hand wheel. And I'm gonna turn my hand wheel uh, towards me, which is going to drive the needle slowly down into my machine. So now here is the tricky part. As I'm turning my hand wheel, right, the needle's gonna go down, but then the needle's going to have to come back up again. As the needle is coming back up, I'm going to slowly pull on the thread in my needle, okay? That pulling motion is what's going to catch the bobbin thread and pull it back up from underneath the machine. 
if you don't feel a slight tug, then chances are you haven't caught the thread yet. So after you're pulling on your needle thread and you're turning your wheel, if you feel that tug, continue pulling on your needle thread and continue turning your wheel until you can see that the bobbin thread has come back up, okay? So let me sort of demo for you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna pull, my needle's traveling down, and as it's gonna come back up, I'm gonna start pulling on this thread. Pulling, 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 I feel a tug. I'm gonna continue pulling, and now I've got my bobbin thread. So if you can't see it, it's this thread that looks like it's kind of looped around my needle thread, okay? Once I've got my bobbin thread up from underneath my machine, I can let my needle thread go. And you need to clear your thread out, all right? So what I tend to do, you can do this with a seam ripper, you can do this with your, your shears, but you're gonna come underneath that bobbin foot and pull those threads out so that both your needle thread and your bobbin thread are cleared out of that space of your feed and they're sitting over to the left, all right? Once you've gotten that done, your machine is actually threaded. You're gonna put that lid, lid back on, covering your bobbin case, and now you're actually ready to start sewing. So the last thing I wanna show you here as far as um, understanding your sewing machine is understanding what all of this means over here and what all of this means in here. Um, so all of these little images over here are essentially just stitch types. We will not be using the vast majority of these in this course. Um, we'll probably be using stitch zero, stitch one, uh, stitch three for sure on this first project. Um, and then when we start doing a buttonhole, we'll be using stitch 30. When you are trying to adjust um, your stitch, you are going to be using these buttons down here and see they kind of correlate with the numbers sitting up here. So by coming over here, I can adjust my stitch and as you can see, it moves my needle around accordingly over here um, uh, above my presser foot. Um, and essentially what it's doing is setting up uh, certain details about your stitch. So it is an automated process. It's setting up the stitch size. Um, it's setting up if there's going to be a zigzag stitching, which I'll talk about in another video. It's setting up all of these things, which you can then adjust manually if you choose to. But just understand that these values you're able to manipulate yourself. The second um, option down below has to do with the zigzag of a stitch. Um, and zigzagging is another kind of important thing that we'll be talking about on this um, machine sampler. But you can, of course, adjust that as well, depending on the type of stitch that you're in. The other thing I wanna show you for now is this uh, little gauge right here. Um, essentially what it's doing is it's controlling the overall speed of your machine. So this is its slowest setting, medium setting, and its fastest setting. Something you're definitely gonna wanna do um, before you start working on your sampler is, is playing with these settings, playing with as many of these settings as you like, um, uh, and seeing how which speed is comfortable for you to work at. If you've never been at a sewing machine before, it's been a long time, then I would probably suggest the slowest speed. And then the last button that I really wanna draw your attention to is going to be this button here that looks like it's doing a U-turn. Um, this is how we do our back stitching. And back stitching is something we'll talk about in another video, but essentially it's the thing that locks your stitch in place so it doesn't unravel. This is essentially your sewing machine. Um, so again, experiment with it, make sure you understand how to thread it, um, and then you're able to get started on the project.